This is uh, what some people refer to as mini me. No, my name's Riley, and whenever we do haunted houses, it's the wild man. Uploaded another one of our classic how-to videos and this one is called how to detail a 3d haunt and as many people know who've come to my tours here in st. Louis you have visited my TerraVisions 3d haunted house and I'm in here right now and it is hot in here because we don't have the air conditioner on but we uploaded this video it will now be uh, on the interwebs right here at the Haunt World YouTube page for eternity. So anyone can see it. It's going to be a time capsule. This video was probably made back in 2012-ish. And, uh, and today, as a recording of this video, we're in you know, the second week of June 2023. Obviously, a lot of things have changed in terms of how I think you should detail or build your own 3d haunted house but I wanted to take this opportunity to give you a little updated information and what I would tell you is this a 3d haunt is a great haunt to add especially to a theme park or a screen park like where you have multiple attractions what you will find is that people will find it to be the best haunt that you have now, if you did just a 3D haunt and nothing else, people would not like it so much. But whenever it's part of something else, people tend to think it's the best haunt at your whole place. I sold a, a Blacklight TerraVisions clown themed 3D haunt to a customer near Philadelphia and I told them at the time, and they had spent all this money on their hayride and all this other stuff. And I said, sadly, you're going to spend the least amount of money on this haunt that you just bought from me and where you've spent the majority on your other attractions. And you're going to get the reviews to come back and tell you that the 3D was the best one. It's not because of anything we do, per se. It's because the customers love these attractions, especially with clowns. So if you're going to do a 3D haunt, you should definitely do clowns because clowns are scary. Like, people are afraid of clowns, and clowns and blacklight go hand in hand. So he calls me up after this. How did you know that people would say? I'm like, I don't know. It's like we do haunted house tours for the haunted house industry here in St. Louis. And we spend gobs and gobs and gobs of money on the darkness to build these amazing scenes. And the, the haunted house industry always comes out and says the same thing. We love the 3D the best. And so do our customers. They love the 3D the best. That's what they always say. But again, if it was a 3D only, they wouldn't like it as much. But when it's part of a bigger thing, they love it. And whenever you're doing a screen park or a haunted theme park or whatever and you got multiple things going on it's you should absolutely have a 3d haunted house because it's totally different than your traditional haunted house I want you to think about this for a second if you did a haunted mansion and our second haunted house is a haunted hospital and your third haunted house is a haunted asylum and then the fourth haunted house is a haunted funeral home. What is the difference between the four? Let me tell you, nothing. They're basically all the same. They just have some different props. You know, when you think about it, a haunted funeral home, it's got the word home in it, like duh. When you do an asylum, and by the way, that's my phone going off. But when you do an asylum, you're still doing it in a haunted mansion style. So that's why a 3D haunt is so good because it's so different. So now, take it away and if you ever need a 3D haunted house or a Christmas house, look for us at blacklightattractions.com. We'd be happy to build you one. But now, we are donating this video made over 15 years ago to YouTube and the entire haunted house industry for years to come. Make sure you like and subscribe and leave a comment and tell us if you thought this video was still relevant.
Hi, my name is uh, Larry and I'm from a company called Blacklight Attractions and what we do is we build attractions all over the world. Uh, we build um, primarily blacklight themed attractions, uh, miniature golf, laser tag, uh, we do mirror mazes, we do haunted houses, um, we've done a lot of dark rides in, in blacklight. Um, dark rides are, are really complicated uh, project. Um, but uh, there's pretty much not any anything that we haven't done before in blacklight or non blacklight. We do both. Um, and you can reach us on the web at blacklightattractions.com. And the purpose of this video is to help you get a grip um, and get your fingers wrapped around uh, how to build a really good 3D haunted house. Okay? Now there's a lot of reasons why um, that you want to have a 3D haunted house, and I'm going to explain them to you. Okay? One of the reasons why you want to have a 3D haunted house is because they're completely different than a regular haunted house. So like if you had a regular haunted house and you have a little extra space, you can add a 3D on and you can upcharge it. You can get an extra five or ten dollars to go through your 3D haunted house. But do people really want to go through your 3D haunted house if it's not really that good? Uh, I say no, because a lot of people don't think 3D haunted houses are that scary, because typically most of you that have done 3D haunted houses, you're just doing some little maze and you have some artist come in and he paints some walls and you put a couple sound effects in there and a couple actors and you know what, to me, that's not good, okay? That's a cheap, easy way to do it. Anybody can do what everybody else is doing, okay, which is just taking the easy approach to a 3D and just building some mazes and having some guy come in for a few thousand bucks and paint some weird figures on the wall. I mean, anybody can do that, but not everybody can do what we're doing, okay? Now, what we do is we're doing something that's way beyond that, okay? When you walk through my 3D on a house, if you could easily say that black light or non-black light, it's one of the best 20, 30 haunted houses in the country, because it is, okay? And that's because I made it that way, okay? It just so happens that it's in 3D. So every time that we build a 3D haunted house, we wanna to try to treat it like it's a real haunted house. It's, uh, you gotta get out of this mode of just like building walls and then painting things on the walls, okay? Because that is uh, status quo. In uh, 2009, there was a haunted house tour uh, for the Trans World Show right here in St. Louis. And people got to see uh, the chair visions that we did, the 3D we did. Now that's like kind of sort of re jump started the whole concept of doing 3Ds. Because people actually saw that a 3D haunted house could be more than just uh, like a, a rat maze, okay, you know, with some paintings on the wall. And that's basically what we want to try to accomplish in this video. We want to try to accomplish. Uh, for you to give your 3D haunted house an identity all on its own, okay? So you've got fans of your haunted house that know, you know, your 3D haunted house. They also know your other haunted house, and they know them as two separate attractions. Like here at the darkness, people know terror visions, okay? They know the darkness, and they know they're two different attractions, okay? And that's important. Um, and um, that's what we want to try to accomplish in the video. And I want to warn you right up front, we're doing this video old style, like I used to do the videos. It's going to be a lot of talking. Um, it's going to be a lot of uh, not seeing a whole lot. Uh, you're going to see pictures come on the screen every so often and drawings. And then eventually we're going to go in the 3D on house and we're going to talk about it. Okay? But I just really believe that if you hired me as a consultant, okay, and I came and talked to you for, you know, a whole entire day, um, we wouldn't do a lot of stuff in the shop. We wouldn't be doing a lot of building and constructing or whatever. We'd be doing a lot of talking, okay, to try to help you get on the right path, okay? Um, because the, the difference between me actually showing you how to build a 3D on a house and me not showing you how to do a 3D on a house is, you know, you can't paint like our 3D painters can, okay? Uh, there's almost no one in the country that can, okay? Um, but you're, you're not a painter, I'm not a painter. I can't paint that kind of detailed stuff, okay? You're gonna have to hire a painter, okay? 
but you as a producer, because that's what you are, you're a producer, you're the director of your attraction, you direct everything, what the actors do, um, you know, how your haunted house is, um, you know, operated, what kind of sounds you're playing, okay, what, and what props you buy, you're the producer, and then you've got your, your crew that help you produce your vision. So whenever you hire an artist, you want to be able to sit down with him and look and see what kind of um, talent he's got. You want to see a lot of pictures and images. You want to get, give him uh, a really good idea of what it is you're trying to accomplish. And I can tell you, the very first thing you want to do whenever you build a 3D on a house is you want to get good drawings. You don't want to do any 3D project okay, without drawings, first and foremost. Because once you, it's like a tattoo on your arm, okay? You're just going to tell somebody, hey, throw a tiger on my arm, okay? Then you look at it, and it's permanent, and you're like, what the heck is that? That's the most hideous tiger I've ever seen. You know, you want to see a drawing, okay? When somebody goes in your haunted house, they start painting 3D images or whatever all over it, you want to make sure that you actually like what he's going to do before he starts putting it on the wall. Okay, recently... We just installed a mummy-themed 3D haunted house in a mall in uh, Thailand. So one of the first things that we did was we did drawings, okay? Um, and you know, drawings are just what they are. They're, they're rough ideas, okay? And whenever we would, say, paint this particular scene right here, we would paint these colors up front, uh, a little bit more of the brighter colors, because we want them to stand out and then everything in here would be been painted in like uh, uh, very dark colors like blues and purples and things like that to make it look far away. So this will give it a nice multiple level uh, of 3D. In this picture right here, you know, we would sit down and analyze this particular drawing and we would determine that the stinger and these claws, we would want it to stick way out. So this wall's got to be sort of in the middle. Okay, so we need definitely your, uh, your, your brighter colors to come forward, your medium colors on the wall, and your darker colors for the scorpion hiding in the cave, okay? So when you have a drawing like this, you can literally look at it and you can say to yourself, okay, what's the best way to make this 3D? Where, what are we gonna use for the colors? Okay, like the vines on the wall, let's have them stick way out from the wall, so we need the walls to be a little bit medium. We need the... Um, the vines and whatnot to be a definitely a brighter color. This was a, a clown uh, drawing that we did. We did a four-sided drawing. Okay, uh, we got little swirls. We got clowns. We got clowns with balloons. Uh, you know, again, you know, every time that we do uh, anything in 3D, we're going to do a drawing. Now. The next thing that we would do is we would really need to find out what angle should the artwork be. So we would do it a, uh, a design, a maze. And as you can see here on my computer, um, this was the maze for the attraction. Um, this big space here would have been for a black hole tunnel, okay? Because it's obviously you know you know it's fairly big. And you can see in a 3D maze design, I would actually incorporate quite a few. Um, um, you know, walls and panels to make the attraction longer. And typically when I see other people's 3D haunted houses, I see 100% just maids with artwork. And as you can see in mine, okay, there's a lot of scenes, although they're not quite as big um, as it would be for a non-3D haunted house, they're still scenes. And of course, the best thing you can put in any 3D haunted house is a black hole tunnel. I mean, that is the vortex, black hole, whatever anybody wants to call it, those are fantastic. And you know, if it was me, uh, whatever artist that I hired to build or to paint my haunted house, I'm um, gonna order, if you're buying a black hole or vortex on or whatever from somebody, uh, order it with the canvas, not a painting, because I found that you know these companies don't do the greatest job of painting them. But it, it's not even, so much that as it is, you might have a specific theme going on in your haunted house. So why would you want to speckle it or put lightning bolts or whatever on your black hole tunnel if you have a clown house? You could paint it to match more of the theme of your haunted house. Another key 
piece to making your 3D on a house have its own identity is you need to get its, its own logo. Okay, so like when you look at the darkness and you go to my website, like scarefest.com, you look at the darkness's website, okay, you see all these pages, all these articles and stories about the darkness, but you also see a button for TerraVisions and when you click on it, it's got its own logo, it's got its own backstory, and it's got its own videos, uh, it's got its own um, photographs, okay, and everything else. I mean, we market TerraVisions as its own unique haunted house, okay, to add value to your existing attraction. Okay. You can do it in two different ways. You could just raise your overall ticket price and say, hey, last year it was $15, now it's $20 because it's two haunted houses. You could, you could say, hey, last year it was $20, now it's going to be $25 because we added another haunted house on the deal. Okay. Um, there's a lot of different ways to do it, but I can tell you that if you don't give your, your 3D haunted house its own identity, like right here, I'm wearing a TerraVisions shirt. Of course, I had the colors. You know, nice and hot and black. Okay, I had a uh, brainstorm design this uh, this incredible logo, and so I actually have some of my staff walking around in television shirts, some of my staff walking around in darkness shirts. Okay, because we've got two hundred houses going on here: darkness, televisions. Okay, and I and whenever we make YouTube videos and stuff to promote for the coming season, we make a video for televisions, we make a video for the darkness. We do photo shoots in televisions, we do photo shoots in the darkness. We treat everything separately, okay? But they just happen to be co-located together. And if you make these attempts and approaches and stuff like this, you're really going to find that people know your, what your 3D haunted house is. Another thing, when you go to trade shows and things like this, and you're, you're literally trying to plan to make your haunted house better, sit down and figure out what can I do to my uh, 3D kind of house. Think out of the box. Don't be thinking it's a 3D kind of house. Let's throw more artwork and paintings in there per se. What special effects could we create? What props or scenes could we build that relate to the theme of your 3D kind of house? Build the attraction out. That's the whole point of this video or you know DVD. I don't know what they call them these days. DVDs, Blu-rays, videos, who knows? VHSs. <laughs> You know, but the reality is that um, you—that's the whole point of this video—is that my 3D haunted house, Terravision 3D, which I'm making the claim that it's the best 3D haunted house in the world. Okay, and I say that because my 3D haunted house isn't like the ones that I've seen, which are just mazes and artwork painted on the walls. Okay, my haunted house is a haunted house. So if I went into to my Terravisions and I started slapping regular paint all over the place and repaint it and theme it, would it look like a haunted house? Okay, because it's a clown theme, obviously I would go in there with real paint and I would start using, you know, bright colors like reds and greens and stuff like that and repaint it to where it's a fun house and then start lighting it with real lights and stuff. Would it look like a haunted house? Yes, it would. It would look like a fun house. That's what it would be built out by. Take the black light out, now start lighting it with real paint, boom, it's a haunted house, okay? If you do a mummy themed haunted house, okay, could you, could you put regular lights in there and would it be a real haunted house? I ask you that question. But that's what's gonna really make your 3D haunted house get its own identity so that when they show up to your haunted house, they want to pay you the extra $10 to go through the 3D because they know every year that it's getting wilder and crazier every single year. Every single year I've got a budget to do TerraVisions. I've got a budget to do the darkness, okay? And I sit down with that budget and I start looking at that budget and I start thinking, okay, what do I want to put towards new paintings? What do I want to put towards uh, more and new improved sounds, okay, that maybe match the scenes better? Maybe what I need is some animations to spit this up. Maybe I need to build a better facade or a cue line or something like that. Uh, invest in some CGI effects, whatever. You know, what is going to make an impact? Because when your customers walk through it, you want them to be able to walk through and see unequivocally, without a doubt, this was not here last year. Okay? And that's my big problem with everybody who builds a haunted house. Okay? Whether it's 3D or not, is that you just go to the Trans World Show or the Trade Show or whatever, or look on a website or a catalog and you buy a whole bunch of of animations or this, that, and the other. And I guarantee you, if you got a big haunted house, if you bought 10 animations and you stuck them in there, I guarantee you 
that if you're lucky, five out of a hundred would even notice that you didn't that you didn't have them last year. Oh yeah, that animation is new. Whoop whoop de do. Okay, that is not selling tickets. Okay, animations and things like that should enhance. Okay, a whole overall scene design. Okay. You know, where you rip everything out and you start from scratch, it's a whole different thing going on. The set design, the theme of the room, the concept of the room supersedes you going to a trade show and buying some props. The props just enhance it. So that's how I treat the 3D haunted houses as well. I don't build a scene around something I can buy. I build a scene, you know, for my attraction based on uh, what, what my vision is. Okay, I create that scene. Now, if somebody sells something that would add some spice to it, then I'll buy it. Okay, if not, I'll create it from scratch. Okay, and you know, I think that's where a lot of people like drop the ball is they see things, they buy things, and they shove things in a haunted house that maybe don't belong there. But they try to make them belong there. You know, it's better to create what you want and then find something that will fit. Okay, and that's very important. And you'll see that later when we walk through Chair Visions, you'll see how everything fits. I know that you're, some of you might be watching this video and going, golly, he sure is talking a lot and not doing a lot. And we might make another video where we do more, okay? But the purpose of this video is to freaking educate you, okay, on how to do this right, okay? So this is like a, almost like you're watching a video of getting consulting. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to give you the best ideas, okay? to help you make your attraction better. And I can do that talking to you face to face more so than I can get in a workshop and say building some five or six things and then you know showing you on your way. So we'll do another video where we talk about that. And the main thing that I want to get across to you is just some of the things that you can do to really make a difference. And it really does start with the floor. You, you know, you can paint the floor, you can do obstacles on the floor, you can paint holes in the floor, make people step over them. There's so many cool things you can do to the floor that will really make the attraction better. Whenever you build your 3D on a house, if you start doing things like the floor, you're going to look up and you're going to go, I can see over the tops of the mazes. Okay, so now that doesn't look good. So another thing that would really make your 3D haunted house better is when you build your mazes, then you build another extra wall, which would be actually an eight foot wall, but it's turned on its side, so now the wall's 12 feet high. So now it's gonna cost you more to paint it up, but now you can't see over the wall, and you can't break that illusion, okay? So a good 3D haunted house would be built up 12 feet, not eight. Okay, and I don't think I've ever seen anybody's 3D haunted house built up higher than 8 feet. But when you see mine, you'll see the whole thing is built up 12 feet. There might be a few spots where it's not built 12 feet because remember what I said. In the first year when I built the, the haunted house, it wasn't uh, as good as it is now. So in the first year, most of it was 8 feet. But as I enhanced it and improved it every year, one of the things I wanted to do was give it to 12 feet. So then we painted it up to 12 feet. And the next thing you might be looking at is like, well, you know, I can see the ceiling. Well, okay, you're right, you can see the ceiling. So now I've got this beautiful walls, I've got beautiful floors, I've painted it up, I can't see windows or, you know, whatever. When I look, my sight line and my attraction, I see right over the walls. You know, so the next problem is, you know, you, you're looking at the ceiling. So, you know, what have we done around here? You know, we've done all kinds of things, okay? If you're in some creepy old thing, you can take boards and make them look like a boarded up ceiling and paint them different colors. We've done that. You can do, um, uh, we've actually taken some props that we bought, like say from Unit 70, we've cut the bases off and put them in the ceiling. You know, hang them up there over your head. Uh, we've got a lot of hanging props. Like uh, I had custom made for me from Ghost Ride Productions, these eyeballs, and I hung them down, okay, like into the scenes, you have to push through them. Uh, we've got, um, dead bodies that we've kind of sort of made famous around here at the darkness with those pigs and all these bodies that we've got you know all these vendors make these hanging props so um, hanging props um, just painting 3d another thing is camo net you can get camo net and then you can haze it with all kinds of 3d paint you can hang that up there because you don't want to block your sprinkler systems you know that's one of the things you don't want to do so camo net can come in real handy if you want to like uh, you know block the ceiling. You don't want to see the ceiling. 
But if you do block the ceiling, that creates a different problem. Now, if you got your black lights up in the ceiling, now they're not penetrating in the scene as much. So then you're going to have to lower your black lights. The bottom line is, no matter what you do, there's going to be a cause and effect. Okay, you're going to get a better result if you do it this way, but then it might hinder you that way. So one of the things you do with 3D haunted houses is you experiment. Maybe something isn't doesn't look right. Maybe you got to move your black lights lower because we've done that also. We've actually taken black lights and put them down in the scenes behind a cutout or something to light up a wall better. Okay. One of the main things though you can do with a 3D haunted house, which I would strongly advise you to do, is paint the ceiling black. Okay. If possible, you want to try to paint the ceiling black. I mean that is really important to do. So uh, because anything black in a 3D haunted house looks just that, black. It doesn't stand out that much under the black light. So let's say you're on a budget, okay, and you need to do a lot of the painting yourself. Well, that's not difficult, okay. Um, then you're going to want to make a lot of stencils, okay. Even so, if you make stencils, you're going to need good drawings, okay. Um, it's easy to make stencils, like say we were doing bubbles, bubble scene in a fun house. So we made these out of cardboard, so we could uh, spray our bubble in there. These also could be circles, okay. Um, there's all kinds of stuff, you know, very simple. We wanted to put stars for a starry night, okay. A little piece of cardboard, a little stencil, okay. You can see this one's got a lot of orange. We wanted to do some menacing eyes, some like Disney-esque looking eyes. That's what this is. These were purple. And everything gets painted on black. And you know, before I go on any more about stencils, let me tell you something. The first thing you want to do when you build your 3D on house, the very first thing you want to do is you want to do a design. You want to do a, uh, a full-blown uh, blueprint. You want to do drawings, okay? Those are the first thing, two things you want to do. And then the very next thing you want to do, the very next thing, is you want to get yourself a paint sprayer and go start to finish and paint everything black. Inside the cube box, cube rooms, the scare boxes, whatever, area, you know, the perimeter, you, it, it's so much easier to paint it black after it's been erected. It's just easier than painting them a panel, flipping a panel, you just go in there with your paint sprayer and paint everything black. So you got a nice fresh black canvas. Because these would be sprayed right on black. Okay? Okay, now you got a little bit more elaborate stencil. This is a clown. And we'll see this in Terravisions um, when we go in there. Stencils like this don't usually last very long. Uh, because after getting hit with so much paint, the, the paper itself starts to weaken and after putting it up on the wall and taking it off every time and every time you put a stencil on you want to take tape and you want to tape it where you got it um, and you could put the whole thing kind of orange and then you can come back with another color maybe and drop in an airbrush, some like red, I mean you can pretty much do whatever you want you can see that this particular clown was painted with several different colors. You got a darker color and you got a lighter color. So there was two colors used on this particular clown. Now how do you make a stencil like this? You get a good artist, he does you a drawing, um, and then after you get that drawing, you print it out on um, uh, transparency paper, and you're gonna need an overhead projector. So you, you put your, you know, your, uh, your uh, paper or your cardboard or whatever you're gonna do up on the wall, real simple, okay? And then you and you put the overhead projector, shine it on there, and you just start taking a pencil and drawing it out so you have a nice draw out of it. And then you take an X-Acto knife and you just start cutting it out. I mean, even an idiot could do it, like me. <laughs> so any you know anybody could do that if you have a good drawing. You have a good drawing, an overhead projector. Um, you shine it up on the wall, right on top of you know where you want the stencil. You can make it any size because you can move the overhead projector back. And then what does it do? It gets bigger. You want it to be smaller, so you want three or four different sizes of this. You move closer, you move farther away with the light, and it gets smaller and bigger. And you can do multiple sizes of the same stencil. And you can go around 
and you can kill a lot of space with stencils. Another cool thing that you can do with your 3D on a house is, is door jams, okay? And we build door jams uh, even in your regular haunted house, you know, like saying a scare box, we call them scare boxes, you know, for your actors to be able to get into the little areas where they're going to um, scare people, like drop pictures and things of this nature. So whenever you're building door jams for a 3D on a house, just even the ones where the actors come in and out, you can build them like strange, okay? Like, you know, they're, they're, they're a square door jam because they're going to fit right in with the rest of your walls, four by eight, you know, posts going up the side, and you can put an angle on the top, okay? So instead of it being straight, it can be angled, okay? And then you can paint it, okay? Weird colors, especially the angle can be a different color. You can paint some where it's almost like guillotine look this way, guillotine look that way. You could do different door jams. I mean, they'll give you that perspective, you know what I mean? That they're all different. Um, we built lots of different style door jams, especially for the clown houses. Um, and then what you do with these door jams is you can put them and break up long hallways. So instead of having a big giant long hallway, you can put several door jams in there. And basically it makes it look more of like a, a fun house or something like that. And because you're able to paint different colors, you know, on the angles themselves and accentuate the fact that it's, it's angled, uh, the actual head part, um, it gives it a really, really cool illusion. The other thing to do with door jams too, instead of doing them, say, angled or whatever, you can do them arched, okay? You can do them arched. And then you can actually paint the, the arch part a different color than the rest of it. And then when you get into the, this, into the, in, you know, the, uh, the interior of the arch, you know, the inside, you can paint that like blue and the outside like orange. And then, guess what you can do? You can take your stencils and you can stencil it, okay? With little stars or maybe a clown right in the middle or something like that, and boom. That is an incredible, incredible way to add some dimension and, uh, you know, to your 3D hunt house. The other thing that we do in Pachera Visions is we do a lot of what we call cutouts, okay? Cutouts are, again, you take a good drawing, uh, like let's say of a clown, okay? A clown that is got a you know an axe in his hand or something to this degree, and then what we would do is we would get a good drawing. We would um, take our overhead projector again, put it up on. Uh, we use really high grade sign board. We would put it on there. We would trace the whole thing out, okay, 100%. So it's almost like a coloring book, you know, color in between the the lines. And then we would have a carpenter cut it out, you know, cut the whole thing out all the way around the axe, you know, you know, don't cut inside the lines, you know, whatever. And you cut it out and you give it back to the artist, you know, and what we'll do is we'll paint the front side and then in some cases we'll paint the back side as well. So now when we go into TerraVisions, we're going to explore cutouts and we're going to talk about cutouts and I'm going to show you what you can do with cutouts. But whenever you paint just the wall flat, okay, that's your dimension, that's your level of 3D you're gonna get. Whenever you do cutouts, for example, we got this one scene where it looks like a clown is busting out of a uh, out of a roof, okay? He's a cutout, okay? So you can physically see he's here and you can see the walls back there, okay? So the cutouts give you more of a four-dimensional look from the wall. So you're breaking the 3D out, not just by color, but by distance. So you're bringing something out farther than something else, so then you're getting a more powerful 3D effect. So cutouts are a great way to add a little bit more dimension to the 3D. It's very important, and we're gonna go into the haunted house here in a little while and show you exactly what we're talking about. Another fun thing to do, and 3D on a house is, and you'll see this in our on a house when we take a little tour of it, it's freezer strips, okay? You can buy freezer strips in all kinds of colors, like red, and white, and black, and you can even get like glowing green. And so uh, the red and white look great together, red, white, red, white, and it looks like a circus tent. So you can like hide areas of your 3D on a house so you can't see down another hallway and see colors. And when I was telling you about those funny door jams and whatnot, you can put freezer strips behind them so you can't see to the other side. And I think that really adds a lot to your 3D haunted house. Uh, it has for us, 
And if you come and tour uh, TerraVision 3D, you'll, you'll see just exactly what I'm talking about. And um, um, you can order freezer strips by the roll, and you can get tons of it in all different colors, and you can mix and match, and you can have a lot of fun with it. Another great thing you can do in a 3D haunted house, and just because it's a 3D haunted house, don't think for a second you can't do effect lights and, and different kinds of like effects. We built a fun house in Terravisions and we used a bubble machine. So we got 3D bubbles like all over the wall, or you know, flying all over the room. And that just makes it a lot more crazy and zany and something you normally wouldn't see in a non 3D haunted house. They make effect lights and they make like little trails of light like all over the walls and stuff like this and it really just is kind of crazy especially when you're wearing the chroma depth glasses it just looks kind of insane and um, but don't think for a second that you shouldn't experiment with effect lights there's companies that sell all kinds of different lights that create different effects and you can use them in your 3d on a house and it will create unique effects in your attraction and don't don't rule out things like bubble machines and things of this nature. But clearly, you know, a 3D on a house should not have fog machines or fog or hazer machines or anything of this nature because it will uh, darken the attraction to the degree where the 3D effects are not working. So we do not have this kind of thing in our, on our 3D on a house. And uh, I would highly advise you to look into lighting effects, bubble machines, anything crazy and zany that would actually add more layers of dimension to your attraction. So we talked about the stencils and we talked about the fun things you can do with them and when you're just trying to kill space in a hallway the stencils are great and you can make like different things in the hallway but you might want to break that up some because it's just too much and so what we do a lot around here is we do different things like for example we do these posters and so we do these 3D posters where we, we, we cut them out so they got really unique, funny looking frames on them. And they're like for the clown houses, they, they're like uh, two cents, one thin dime, you know, television, you know, whatever. See the amazing whatever, freak boy or whatever. And so you can have these posters made. Of course, again, you need a professional artist to paint them. And when you do, and you put them in hallways and stuff, and it breaks up the monotony of a hallway. A lot of times here at the Cherubisions, because it is a clown theme, we build funny mirrors, okay? Funny mirrors are great, okay? And then we'll actually build a very creative frame around it, you know, all kinds of crazy zany frame that goes all the way around the mirrors, okay? And that actually sticks out in front of the wall, and that adds a lot of dimension um, as well. To, so we're trying to get away from all of the flat wall look, okay? Another thing that you can do to these walls that we've done here is we do these like tiger type stripes and they're not very difficult to do. Like, it's very simple actually. So you might do something like this, okay? Okay, something like that, okay? And then and you got one piece of plywood, let's say. And you can take these kinds of things to give your walls more dimension. You paint them before you ever put them on your wall. You paint them green, you paint them red, you paint them blue. And then you stick them on the wall in all kinds of crazy ways. So it looks kind of Tim Burton-ish, okay? So when you're walking down that hallway, you're actually physically touching these things, okay? And they're, they're out from the wall. And then when, when you run your tiger strike down to the wall, you can paint the floor and run the tiger stripe over to the other side of the wall, okay? And this is just a, another unique way of, say, getting some dimension, getting some, getting away from just being your typical flat wall, okay? And to get some, you know, texture to your attraction. Um, and again, another great way to do it is with the, um, <clears throat> the funny mirrors or things of this nature, things that stick out from the wall, unique frames, the posters, like I was telling you, you can actually do the posters, but then you could actually build a really wild, crazy frame to go over it that's got all these, you know, jaggedy looking edges with all these funny looking colors. Anything that you can do to add texture and dimension to your 3D on house is going to make for a gigantic benefit to your attraction. One of the things that I probably use a little too much uh, in all the haunted houses I build is I build a lot of crates, okay? 
I build a lot of crates because I don't like rails. I've seen haunted houses where they're trying to keep you out of a scene, so they'll just run rails across, okay? And I think that's, you know, completely bogus, okay? Uh, it ruins the scene. It, gives, it, it basically tells you right off the bat that, you know, oh, this is a haunted house, this is a scene, okay? And we don't want that. What we want is we want everything to look as realistic and as natural as possible. So what are some of the things that you can put in front of something because you want to keep them away from it because it's going to be an animation springing out or, you know, something. So we do a lot of crates, okay, and you can position crates like up and down. So instead of actually having a wall, you could actually eliminate a whole entire wall and you can do funny looking crates like stacked up and down and painted different colors and put like bananas or little stencils on them, you know, like, you know, uh, when I said bananas, they could be banana crates or whatever with a funny looking banana logo. And you can do different things. You can eliminate walls altogether and actually physically build like funny looking crates. But we don't have to stop there. There's all kinds of, uh, of things that we could do to keep people from getting into a scene, um, especially in a 3D on a house. I'll give you another example. You can buy these old wine barrels, okay, and you can paint zany stripes going all the way across them with some kind of clown logo on it, for example. Now that is if you're doing a clown theme, okay. Uh, same thing if it was, say, an adventurous, adventurous type of attraction. You can still do crates. You can do, like, they're, you know, supply crates, okay. The barrels could be TNT barrels, okay. Uh, they could be barrels of water or oil or anything. And these can be used to keep people out of scenes. Let me give you another great tip to really make your 3D haunted house shine, okay? Typically, uh, this is very crude because I think it's the best way to explain it to you. So let's say you got a wall here and I'm gonna put a line in the middle because this is say eight foot wall. This is four foot, four foot. So you do some really cool painting on it or whatever, okay? Make it oversized, okay? For example, you got a really cool drawing, okay? Remember we talked about cutouts, okay? Do do the cutout, okay? Like you got the clown's like head, and here's his hair, okay? Here's the top of his head, okay? Right? And then maybe there's another wall going over here. So you got kind of his body painted on here, okay? And then his hand kind of comes up to this point here, and then do a cutout. Here's his hand, and here's his axe. Okay, I know it's upside down. So what you can do is see you got your eight foot wall and you paint his body on here. You got his arm kind of coming up a third wall. And then you do the cutout, okay, of his axe and his hand. And it goes, mounts right on top of the wall. And then you got his head as a whole nother cutout. So now you got like a 12, 14, 16 foot clown. And that'll really, you know, make the attraction really neat. Let's say you're doing a snake. So you've got like all his snake body uh, all over the place. And then let's say his tail comes up to here. Let's say he's a rattlesnake, okay? So then you got his rattle, you know what I mean, coming up. And then, and then like his body comes back over here, okay? And then you've got like his head. And then you, you paint him so that his mouth is down here with his teeth and he's looking down at you, okay? So you do a three panel body, you do a rattle, and you do a head that comes off the top of the wall. You know, I hate snakes, okay, you're starting to get on my nerves. <laughs> so, you know, same thing, okay, and you know, we can do this all day long. You know, let's say you got mummy guards, okay, and they're like guarding something, okay, and uh, their spears go over the top of the walls, okay. Uh, with one big giant mummy coming up off the top of the wall, okay? And then you got another guard over here, and his spear, again, comes up off the top of the wall. Uh, literally, you can do anything you want. Here's another thing, like what if you, you did like a really big door here, okay? And then you did like a, like a cylinder block kind of thing, okay? And then right in here you put like, um, you know, cloth, and then you rear projected some kind of image on it, like a CGI image or something like that, okay? You know, there, there's so many things you can do by doing oversized, and don't think inside the box, like, oh, the wall's eight foot, or, hey, let's make it 12 foot. It's kind of neat to 
to do a cutout instead of doing the wall um, 12 feet or what or 14 feet or something like that do the painting like really big up to the eight foot point and then everything above that is a cutout that looks that will look really great uh, we've done it quite a bit in the attractions we've done especially in the blacklight mini golfs and they look uh, freaking fantastic so it'll really work out for you I'm telling you we only have a couple more things to cover uh, and then we're actually going to head into the haunted house and we're going to do a little walkthrough and I'm going to show you examples of everything that I've said. So I did want to tell you that if you really want to have the best possible uh, 3D artwork, you can give us a call. We um, do a lot of paintings on panels. Um, so we actually can almost like paint your whole entire 3D haunted house right here. You could actually build your own maze and we could provide you all the artwork. Uh, we also build complete 3D haunted houses that we actually build them and install them, um, complete with facades, animations, the whole shebang. So go to our website, blacklightattractions.com, and contact us. We'd be more than happy just to do your artwork. We could come to your location and paint your 3D haunted house over. Uh, you name it, and we could do it for you. Just give us a call at blacklightattractions.com. Our phone number, email, everything's on the website. And one of the things that I wanted to talk about um, is your maze design again, and I wanted to talk about facades, okay? It's very important that whenever you do a 3D haunted house that you, you try to set the tone of the 3D attraction by having a really nice facade, okay? You can do facades as cutouts. I know there's companies that sell inflatable, like clown type things, or they're real nice if you got a lot of space or something like that. If you don't, make sure you build out a really neat queue line slash facade. When we go to TerraVisions, I'm going to show you the, the entryway that we've done. And whenever we do them for like Six Flags, we've built lots of 3D on houses for Six Flags, Cedar Point, Kings Island, Kennywood, you name it. Uh, we've built 3D on houses for them. We usually build huge um, multi-layered cutout type style facades and they, they turn out absolutely fantastic. And then you could take like a Christmas lights, believe it or not, and actually hang them you know, from the facade out to like trees and stuff. Um, and that looks absolutely stunning. So one of the things I'm gonna show you um, right here, right now, is one of the ways that I like to do uh, 3D mazes or haunted house mazes for that matter, but more specifically 3D mazes, you know, I like to, you know, have a lot of hallways like your typical 3D haunted house because I usually make a 3D haunted house anywhere between two and four thousand square feet so usually you're not making them really big so you want people to walk through them as long as possible so you want a lot of twists and turns backs and fours ups and downs but you also want to add scenes to it as well so one of the things that I always do is you want to get a blueprint of the space and then I'll usually have you know our architect put a grid over the space so as you see here you know, I can see where you're entering and exiting this building, so that's always important to know where your entrance and exit's going to be. That whenever you make a design, you always want to know. You, especially when I'm talking to like Six Flags or a client or something, I want to know. I want to see on the blueprint physically circle and write exit. Okay. Okay. So I know you want people to come out right here. That's the first most important thing. Entrance, circle it, okay, entrance right here, okay, very important, okay, enter, very important, I need to know where you're going to enter, it's also going to affect how I design the facade, so if I know I got to start here, and I'm going to end here, that is your most important thing when you're making a maze design, is know where you're going to come in and where you're going to go out, okay, and then we've got this funny looking space, which is very weird and you want to make sure that you always have space for your scare boxes so whenever you make these long hallways these are great spaces right here okay you can write SB in there okay you want these scare boxes where you can run a 3d haunted house very critical with fewer actors okay because you're not going to be charging $20 to get a 3d haunted house so you don't want to have 30 40 actors in there you want to be able to run it with less actors you have to remember if you do the 3D haunted house very well, people are going to be easily distracted by looking at the floors, looking at the walls, and you can have fewer actors scaring them. If you can actually make sure that you have these scare boxes in where 
where when you make these scare boxes, they can scare them this way, this way, this way, this way, and it's different people every time. So you keep your actors on their toes. But it's, it, it really isn't that difficult to make the maze, as you see, that I've already, you know, um, have done a pretty good job right here. So we've come in, we've come across this scare box, we've got some maze here. Okay, I'll take them up and away from the scare box again. Okay, and send them down this way. Okay. This is a nice little sight scene. Okay, and so, you know, obviously we're gonna run them around some stuff. You know, and then we might do like this, send them down the hallway, okay? Bring them back this way. Again, this is, would be, a, you know, a great spot for a scare box right here. You know, we'll bring them back across the same scare box again. We're getting closer to the front. Let's send them back up, okay? No problem. One of the things when you're making maze is what you want to do, especially in a 3D haunted house, you want to try to put in as many twists and turns, which makes it longer to walk. You want to try to get them, your objective is to get them all the way to the top, bring them all the way back to the exit, and then figure out a way to get them all the way to the back again, all the way to the exit again. And the actual linear square footage of walking will literally be four or five to one to a regular haunted house. So now, I think we've talked enough. You've seen a lot of great images that we've thrown up on the screen. So now let's do this. Uh, it's a little cold. I'm going to throw on my coat. Let's go back into the haunted house and let's look at all the things that we've talked about and physically see them in the attraction so now you can understand how we're going to take a standard 3D haunted house that was typically just mazes and paint and now it looks like a real haunted house. So let's load up our equipment, let's head back there and take a look. All right, so we're in the haunted house. We're gonna do this two ways. I got just the black lights on. We're gonna walk around. We're gonna show you some of the stuff we've been talking about. Then we're gonna turn the lights, the power on to the scenes and it's gonna be hard to hear us. But we wanna show you so that you can kind of sort of see some of the some of the uh, the different things like that are actually turned on. This is uh, what some people refer to as mini me. No, my name's Riley and whenever we do haunted houses, it's the wild family. That's right, brother. Every time we do a haunted house, it's wow factor or no factor, okay? And that's what you're going to see in Terror Business. What you're going to see is the wow factor. Because everywhere you turn, you're like, wow, okay? And so if you really want your 3D haunted house to have that wow factor, they got to turn it up a notch. Isn't that right, Riley? Mm -hmm. It can't be just a little maze you walk through with some paintings. you got to go the extra nine yards. So what we're going to do is we're just going to mosey on through here. We're going to point out some of the things that we talked about in the video, and you'll see what we're talking about. And Riley, can you help me walk around and point out some things? Yeah. Let's go. So where we're at right now is the Q-Look room. And as you can see, we talked about crates and stuff. And look at this. We also took these. These are, you know, your, your typical uh, skids or whatever, you know, for, for freight and whatnot. And we piece them together because it's a clown house mixed with uh, crates. The whole concept is that, you know, if this was a circus came to town, they would make like some really shrewd, you know, or crude uh, uh, queue line, you know what I mean, to queue people up. And that, so that's why it's all, you know, out of proportion. Um, as you can see, you've got some crates higher than others. You've got loading skids. We, get, we did this canvas uh, a perimeter because the reason why we did the canvas is because we figured if it was a circus coming to town, they'd be in a big top tent. So that's why we did the canvas. Uh, we've thrown some funny mirrors in here uh, for good measure. And as you can see, these funny mirrors here, okay, we've built these really neat frames. Here's a perfect example of a cutout. So we did the frame, it's nice and flat. And then there's another one that goes over the top of it and we're covering a big chunk of the funny mirror. But there again, people are waiting and they're experiencing something really cool. We come over here, we didn't go very far, and here's one of our posters. I literally have tons of these made because I like to put them everywhere. As we walk through, you'll see. So this poster, warning the clown, only inside the big top at TerraVisions, okay? It is off the wall, as you can see, okay? But it breaks up the monotony. Uh, you can break up the monotony all through the traction. We put this tiger here. Whose idea was that? That was mine. That was your idea, okay. So you, you, we bought this little fiberglass uh, tiger. We stuck him up there because it was a clown theme. Let's keep coming. 
I love this thing. This little midget, okay? I have these two little crates, and I just threw this little midget up there because he looks like a, you know, like a carny, somebody you'd see in a carnival. And, uh, and that's the whole idea of this queue line. We're trying to give you the idea that you're in a, you know, a circus, you're about to go on a circus. If you look above my head, you see the little Christmas lights I was talking about, just little lights, and you see they're all up to the ceiling. We got the little flags. We're just trying to give you the whole idea that you're at the circus. And then if you look right above your head, you see our logo right over the entrance, TerraVision. Now, as we step into the haunted house, let's show them the wow factor, right? Come on. This is an ice cave, and you're probably thinking that's crazy, but I just love the idea. You see what we have drop pictures built into it, okay? They're also themed. The floor looks like, you know, the caves. And whenever you see the blue, it looks like it, it's nothing there. So you actually have people walking and stepping on the icebergs to get through here. You see also, if you look up, the ceiling is how high? It's 12 feet. Everywhere you look, it's 12 feet. If you come over here, you'll see a door jam, and it's built at an angle, like I was explaining to you. And here I'm utilizing black freezer strips, opposed to any kind of colored freezer strip, because you know there's no, there was no good color for this particular thing, and black seemed to be the best. As you come through here, you see the floor painted, the, the wall is up really high, and we've got our Mr. Freeze type of clown or whatever, and he's got a freeze gun at you. And what do you see right here? Riley, what is this right here? What is this thing right here? What is this, what's this gonna blast? It's gonna blast CO2, smoke. baby, right? This is the wow factor right here, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay, because you wouldn't expect to see this in a haunted house. It, it isn't cheap, okay, to have a CO2 cannon. But so, there's a sound effect, uh, that I had custom made, special sound effect where the, the, the Mr. Freeze style clown is talking to you about freezing you and then guess what? He hits you with a CO2 cannon, the actor presses a button and boom, that's the wow factor. Okay, so now we're in television a little bit more. I want to talk a little bit more. As you can see, we built out this little puppet show. And it's three different cutouts. You got the header, you got the sign, and you actually have the clown okay that's got all the little puppets on strings okay so this is actually you know a built out scene okay so it's a puppet show now another really cool thing that we did over here and, and again we used the black freezer strips to great use we've got this mysterious uh, magician up here okay and we paint it the door jam you see the door jam is angled at an arch and that right right mm -hmm. And then we painted his uh, coat down around both sides, so it looks like you're walking under his coat. And that, okay, separates the men from the boys right there. Okay, when you're blending things in together, okay, and you're thinking outside the box, okay, you're really taking it a, a, a step above. And if you look on the floor, you see our stencils, you see our stars, our bigger stars, and we painted uh, poker cards and whatnot all over the floor. And I'm telling you right now, okay, that is what separates a really good 3D haunted house from a mediocre one. Okay, so what you see here is you see your typical painting on the wall. But let me explain why this scene is better than the typical one. Well, first off, we have these little awesome multiple level pits in the floor. You got orange, yellow, green, blue, and it goes to all the way to black. So when you walk across here, it looks like a big giant hole in the floor. You can't see it really good because it's, you know, it's kind of dirty, but in the flat out black light, it looks spectacular. And here, we've actually taken, we've had props made because this is a freak show. We did the cutouts. We built the cages. This is, uh, you know, fish face. You see we've got like a, like a fish type of man. We got bubbles back there. We did the plexiglass in the front, made it look like he's in some kind of aquarium. And, you know, as we go through, you know, we see more boxes, more cutouts. Uh, we got the Siamese twins, okay? You know, it's more built out. We got the, the obstacles all through the floor. We got an actor that'll scare from here, okay? And then, of course, we do still have some flat wall type paintings, but we're trying to mix it up. We got these crates, we got these uh, cutouts, we've got the floors painted, we've got all kinds of props. We got a lot of stuff going on in here, which is exactly, you know, what I was trying to get across to you. You'll see 
just randomly, we've got a cutout clown up there, like I was telling you. See, what we've got right here, we're on the inside of the maze. This is an eight foot high wall. Here's an example where we've actually put something over the top. So we're trying to make, you know, give them the illusion that there's these clowns on the other side of the wall and they're coming over the top of the wall, you know, stab you, throw bombs on you. We've mixed in these paintings. We've painted the walls in these drippy stripes. You see bugs on the floor. Okay, you got all kinds of different bugs, and these are all stencils, okay? And we've got another painting on the wall here. We've got a neat looking prop. We've got a cutout up here, okay? Now, this is what I wanted to show you. We've done the door jam. Do you see how cool the door jam looks being cut up really high like that? Okay, and over here, we've got the wall going up 12 feet. So we were able to make the door jam higher. And then here's a great example of different color freezer strips. And if you turn your light off real quick, and it'll be kind of dark, but you'll still be able to see how they kind of glow. And that's pretty cool. Okay, now we have right here, we painted like some like hole right here. And the illusion is you gotta step on the wood boards. And we have um, that eye right there, it spins around. And we have that eye prop right here. And this is pretty cool, this is the wild factor right here. We have these eyeballs, we have them everywhere, and you see how gross they are. And it just blends in with the illusion of eyeballs. As Raleigh was explaining to you, this scene, it's just a hallway, but it's got the wow factor because you've got the crack in the floor, you've got the eyes on the walls, you've got the eyeball uh, clown in the ceiling, you've got the eyes hanging here, but we didn't stop there because this actually rotates like Riley said. And then look at here, this is what I wanted to show you. Here, this is just adds to the wow factor. We built an arch door jam. We painted zillions of little teeny tiny eyeballs all over it. And then guess what? These orange freezer strips, really give the impact. It's a nice little uh, touch to the whole hallway. So we've turned a hallway, an ordinary hallway, into the wow factor. So I talked to you a lot about the crates. And you see, I could have easily put walls in here, but I didn't. I built a whole bunch of crates and you have to walk around them. Right here, if you look over here, I've got a cutout. And what's really cool about these cutouts, and you see these balloons, okay, they're not on the wall. Some of them are, some of them aren't because I'm giving you multiple levels with the cutouts. The clown's on the, the cutout, he's off the wall. We have real physical strings, we've got real props, all these cool crates as a way to get you through the scene. We've got the dynamite guy up there, and then every single one of these crates, if you look, they're all built with these slats in them because there's lights in them and there's a dynamite effect. So when the, when the guy throws the dynamite down, there's an explosion and you see lights everywhere. And this year we added this really neat painting. So again, we're using a combination of just painting on the wall, but we're also trying to build the scene out. Dad, don't forget that there's bombs, dynamite, craters on the ground. And don't forget that those spin and those spin too. Oh yeah, I almost forgot about that. Thanks, Riley, for bringing that up. We painted all the bombs and everything, the craters in the floor. And this was a really cool idea that we came up with last year. See here, we got another cutout clown. You see the space in between the wall. And he looks like he's a juggler. So we gave him all kinds of dangerous things that he's juggling, so they spin. And you know what, Riley, what is that right there? That's the wild factor. That's right. So what we got going on here, again, is just another ordinary hallway. We talked a lot about this. We got just a nice little painting here. You see the lightning bolts? We've extended them down all the way into the floor. Okay, so we keep that theme going. But what I really want to show you is over here. Okay, you see we did another creative looking door jam. We put some uh, uh, fluorescent uh, curtains in here and then we painted the, uh, um, the lightning or whatever all over it. And whenever you go from one scene to the next, okay, these little door jams make a big impact. We did the, uh, the archways here. Okay, and you don't go very far, and you run into another one, and then here's a nice little scare box for an actor. And I'm telling you what, you always want to cap off your 3D scenes with a, your best painting at the end of the hallway. You know, your best clown or you know piece has got to be kind of like the payoff at the end. Now here, we're using uh, red and white freezer strips to get that, that tent look. Okay, now let's come on in here. But you, you see the, the stripes, okay? They're on the wall, they're off the wall. These are cutouts. There are three layers cutouts. You got the clown head, the body, 
and you got the spring. So what could you physically do with this when you're bringing it off the wall? You really want the wow factor? Put this clown head on a, some kind of motor that makes him turn side to side and make this body turn to side to side. And that is, would definitely be the wow factor for sure. As we come around through the maze, what do we see here? We see a beautiful door jam, okay, on this side over here. We see crates that make walls, and we see this door jam. And what we've done is we've cut out uh, and given it a, a border, okay, and we painted it orange. It really makes it stand out, okay. And then, of course, we've got our freezer strips. Uh, we got these jack in the boxes instead of just painting the, jack, the, the boxes on the walls. You see, we've built them out and painted them off the wall, which I think makes a huge, huge difference. And then, if you look around the room, we, you know, everywhere I had dead space, I put, you know, uh, clown posters, you know, which I told you was one of my favorite things to do. And then in here, you know, again, just the difference between, you know, being average or being a cut above. So we bought this animation and it kind of tilts and moves around and we built this custom crate for it to enclose it, okay, and basically to make it a little bit safer so people can't touch the mechanisms, but at the same time to try to make it look a little bit more like it's, you can only see it here at TerraVision. Now you want to talk wow factor, this is the wow factor. This was our, you know, original ice cream truck, we threw it away, we built a brand new one. This is actually a TV set and we filmed some actors okay driving the ice cream car so when you come up here you're gonna see this crazy actor driving it and basically he kills the, uh, the the victim and this whole thing's on a motion motion based platform so it moves all over the place and see in order to get in it we painted it to look like sidewalks now this is really cool uh, this is really what separates men from a boy okay we actually did this clown dog type of cutout you see he's whizzing on a fire hydrant and we actually got a vacuum formed by fire hydrant, okay? Because we could paint a fire hydrant, but we actually got a fire hydrant. And then as you come in, and then right here is another TV set, but this one is of uh, you seeing the clown car move. We filmed, you know, going down the street and body parts flying up. Now see, that's the wow factor. You don't have to think, okay, like a 3D haunted house has just gotta be, you know, nothing but some walls in a maze, okay? We're thinking outside the box. This is a real beer coffin. It's supposed to be, you know, the coffin where, you know, you would, they would have the ice cream, but we went out and physically bought a real one, okay? And we put it in here, okay? This is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. Now, to hide the ceiling, here is what I was talking about. We put some black camo net up there to try to, you know, like, so we don't blow the illusion that you're, you know, in a truck completely. When we came back here, this would be the roll-up door. So we got some corrugated um, uh, wall form here that we put up to make it, you know, again, try to make it as much as possible look like a real truck. Okay, as you can see here, we're kind of sort of like in a crate hallway. You see, we've actually put the crates above you. So um, we have an animation up there. If you turn around, you'll see uh, clowns coming out over the top of crates over there. If you come over here, you see clowns coming out over the crates here. The whole theme of this whole room is that clowns are coming, they're all coming out over the top of you. And then as you come this direction, uh, first off you see the whole scene is built out of crates and stuff like that. And then we built this uh, ticket booth and you see we've done another cutout where it looks like he's coming through the canvas. And then let's come this way because I'm going to show you something really cool. Okay, as you can see, we have these awesome looking panel things right down here. And as you can notice, they match the funny mirrors. And we're going to have a bubble machine, and there's going to be bubbles everywhere. And it's going to be really cool. And we got some CGI clown over there. And he's huge, and it looks like he's going to eat you from that way. And as you notice, we have all these. Larry the Laugher, of course. <laughs> and we have all these funny mirrors. Yeah, you know what? Let me tell you something. Good job, right? <laughs> These floors are patterns that we just, we painted the floor black, we took uh, masking tape, we taped them off, and then we painted in between the masking tape. It was really simple. And then you see your stencils all up there, your bubbles, your clowns, and everything else. And if you come around the corner here, this is the wow factor here. We've got CGI clown eyes, we got CGI uh, tonsils, 
Uh, you see, what you see here is a, um, a scare box right here. And the whole thing is wrapped in funny mirrors. And if you come over here, we were able to utilize uh, a really nice uh, animation from Bo. It's a moving around, it's a moving eye. So we did this um, Cyclops clown type of side. And with these floors and everything is just popping like crazy. And if you turn around over here, more multi-level cutouts of like a Gerber type of looking baby with the axes and knives and everything else. Let me tell you something. This is what really makes a great 3D haunted house. That it doesn't look like a 3D haunted house. It looks like a real haunted house. Now let's show you a couple more things and then uh, we'll talk about wrapping this video up. As we talked about hallways and stuff, look at these door jam type things we made. We didn't make them full built out. We painted them on the wall, but we made these pieces. And what they actually do, come on in a little farther, they actually hold animation. And they're actually animations and it holds the clown head and then it'll drop it. So we've made these really neat looking little door jams that go in between the walls. And then if you look at the side of the walls, we painted more arches on the wall. Everywhere you see arches, okay? And that's really what makes the thing zing. And then when we get around the corner, we have a black hole tunnel to top it all off. And that's really what makes our 3D haunted house more than just a 3D haunted house. Now I'm going to turn the power on. I'm going to show you some effect lights. But you see all these lights moving all around Riley, all over the floor. Here's my hand. Okay, all these little lights moving around. Effect lights are something you can utilize in a 3D haunted house. And it's made this incredible uh, patterns all over the walls, and it's just breathtaking. So there you have it, how to detail your 3D haunted house. There's a lot of talking on it because that's what you need to see. That's what we want you to understand on how to really separate your 3D haunted house from your competitions. If you really want to distinguish your 3D haunted house from your regular haunted house, you got to give it its own identity. You got to really pay a lot of attention to it. You got to massage it into a genuine haunted house that can stand alone. At the end of the day, our Terra Visions, I can take it anywhere in the country uh, and compete okay, with another haunted house, just on its own merit. And that's where you want your 3D haunted house to be. Is that not right? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. So at the end of the day, I hope this video has been of a help to you. If you can, uh, log on to our website, blacklightattractions.com. You can see hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pictures and videos of 3D attractions that we built. And don't forget, if you need someone to build you a 3D haunted house or come in and revitalize your 3D haunted house or just paint panels for you, give us a call, but log in to blacklightattractions.com. Well, make sure you like and subscribe and ring the bell, ding, 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 so you can get notifications because we're uploading all kinds of new content, not content from 15 years ago, but content that is relevant today. And you know, these videos that I'm uploading, a lot of them are still very relevant. I've had a lot of comments about that. So leave a comment, let us know what you thought of this video. Tell us what you think is different today. So, thanks for watching, and until next time, pleasant screams. For scary videos and more, subscribe to our YouTube page, HuntWorld.com.